Just doing a sound check for everybody that's joining us right now. This is Joy Hoffmeister, if you can't see, but we welcome those of you who've joined us by Zoom or uh, by telephone. And we will be starting in just one moment. Let's give uh, those who are joining us just another 30 seconds or so. And just a reminder for anyone who is joining the call, you can please keep yourself on mute. Our numbers are still climbing. It looks like we have about 655 on the call at this moment. And <clears throat> since it's still climbing, let's just give it another uh, maybe 20 seconds and then we'll get started. Thanks again. Hope you guys are having a good Sunday. All right, well, I wanna welcome all of you who joined today. It is Sunday, March the 29th, and I'm grateful that so many of you are on the call. It looks like we're right around um, maybe uh, 686. Uh, we'll probably hit about 700 here in just a few minutes, but let's go ahead and get started. We've got a lot to cover in this next hour, and I'm going to um, be navigating a little myself as I look for the agenda, but um, welcome everyone. I just wanna tell you, I appreciate all the work and planning that you are doing right now. Um, there's a lot of resources. In fact, probably there's so many that it's tough to navigate. So we wanna make sure we're highlighting those things that you need and that you're able to go and look up uh, specific guidance on particular issues um, in the FAQs. But be aware there are a lot of other tools. Speaking of that, we have the distance learning framework and I'm gonna just turn this over to Aaron Espolt if he is available right now. Yes, Superintendent, thank you. Can you hear me? I can, thanks. Um, so thank you for all that's joining us today. Um, we wanted to host an hour to really just be around uh, this guidance, this, this time of planning. Um, superintendent has been doing her weekly calls, sometimes multiple a week with district leaders. And this, this is not necessarily to replace that call, but this is to be specific guidance around your planning and the efforts that you're doing to be ready for April 6th. And so I appreciate you spending your Sunday afternoon with us. Um, we will do this pretty much the same way that we always do. Uh, we'll see your questions in the chat box. We'll try to be attentive to those if you have any specific questions. We have our whole SDE team here, um, curriculum instruction, special ed, we have child nutrition, um, we have legal, we have a, a many different departments that are available to answer any questions that you have. We'll also have some time to hear from some schools as they begin their efforts. Uh, so we'll have Sand Springs and Fort Gibson and Hal speak a little bit about what their experiences have been and what this will look like as they try to implement their plan starting um, next Monday. And then we'll also have some a little bit short amount of time for our uh, support organizations, COSA and OSSBA and OPSRC, who's also been supporting uh, member schools and really kind of working with SDE and we appreciate that partnership as well because we're all in this together. And this is something that we definitely um, have many different viewpoints on and many different aspects as we kind of combine these and plan. 
to get started today, I kind of wanted to reference the um, guidance that was posted, the distance learning resources that was posted on the SDE website. Uh, those hit live on Friday, as you're well aware of. Um, when that hit, I wanted to kind of take you through a little bit of what that is and what that isn't. Um, so the whole intent was to make a document that allowed school districts the flexibility and the autonomy to have local control in making the decisions that best fit your district. Um, we know that we have very capable and very um, innovative school leaders as well as teachers and planning teams that will make this work for their individual communities. And we stress that as through the entire creation of these resources, that this was not to be a all-in-one framework of this is how you provide distance learning in your community. The intent was to give the local control and the flexibility, um, but also ensure that learning continued to happen, to ensure that we still had great things happening for kids. Um, as we worked at SDE, we all know, um, we, along with this member schools, that we provide the hope for children. We provide that stability that is missing. And as Superintendent Hoffmeister said many times, that stability doesn't necessarily have to come within the walls, but can come from those relationships and the contacts of the great people that we have working across Oklahoma and working for our children. And so we want to get back to that. And we want to ensure that those great things are continuing to happen all the way up till at least May the 8th um, that superintendent has set for us. And so as I take you through the document real quick, again, we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end if you have any, but I wanted to let you know what was available because the superintendent mentioned there's so much here, it could almost become overwhelming if you just take it all at once. I had someone tell me uh, last week that this, this is not like drinking from a fire hose, but more like from Niagara Falls. And so we have to be able to break this up and allow you to kind of digest it um, as we go through it. I wanted to first start with that this guidance starts with uh, surveys that you can give to your district staff or give to your communities. I want to stress that these surveys are optional. The one that superintendent sent out last week uh, that we asked to be returned by Friday, allowed her to have the information that she needed to advocate for us on the federal level and across the state as she has communications with legislators and congressmen and women to be able to get us what we need. However, these surveys were to give you the information that you would need to be able to start your planning process. Those surveys are again completely optional by the district level we do believe that it's necessary for you to involve your stakeholders as you begin to plan. However, as I was speaking to many of you over this weekend, a lot of you have already sent out your individual surveys or sent out major own surveys, and that is completely fine. Again, this document is for you to pick what you need to make your plan successful. Um, so after we get through the surveys, the next thing that was in there was some resources for administrators. Again, a great deal of uh, information is here for you to review, and I hope you've had time since Friday to review some of that. One of the big things I would just like to point out is the important considerations before you begin. Uh, we need to ensure that our staff and our community and that we're communicating effectively with those individuals, which I'm sure you are, but the intent of this time, what is the vision, what is this plan going to look like uh, within that before you begin document, there was suggestions of how to engage teachers, how to engage the student voice, how to engage the different aspects of rolling out a plan through May, uh, up into May. And then there was also a optional five day plan that gave you some ideas that you could base your plan around for this next week as you roll out this to staff and students and parents of what those five days could be Again, this is all completely optional based upon your needs. The next thing is essential resources for teachers. A great deal of information is here specifically around the content and the grade bands. We have the executive director of uh, curriculum instruction, Tiffany Neal, and we'll call on her in just a second to give a little bit more information. This is a section that especially is being continually updated. There is more information being added uh, almost every day to this as we continue to build out more resources for teachers. Um, just as of this morning, some more information got added to that. And so I want to let her speak to that in just a section, section, second. But again, 
this would definitely be a resource for your teachers, your curriculum instruction, your instructional leaders to be able to reference to how much time should we be um, applicating. One thing I wanted to address, and I've just been getting a host of questions throughout this weekend, and, and I'll try to touch on a couple of those now. Uh, superintendent answered on Friday about, is this just for core? Or we expected to do all subjects. And again, we did not mandate anything in here. You'll know what fits your districts the best. But I heard some great suggestions from some districts that were calling in um, this weekend about how they were using their uh, non-core subjects or extracurricular teachers to be able to do wellness checks for kids, to be able to check on their mental health, be able to check to see if they have any needs as far as food needs and shelter needs. Again, our schools were a great resource um, for the social aspect of our students and the relationships are the greatest thing that we can give our students, especially in this time. So again, as we look at this and we, when we focus on content, we also remember that we have another obligation to our students and that's to be able to check on their well-being. A lot of great ideas are coming about and creativity and innovation from school districts about how to continue to do that in this distance learning time and environment. So that was just another suggestion of using your non-core, your extracurricular teachers to do senior credit checks and college applications because this isn't a typical time for seniors as they progress and finish out their year. So there's a lot of opportunity to continue to engage them in their future, in their learning, in their post-secondary opportunities. Um, next sections were special ed and EL resources. Again, there's so much to special ed that we have Todd Lofton, special ed director, executive director of special ed on the line if there's any questions around that, but they have built out their entire resources on their page as well because there's just so much there. And then finally, child nutrition um, with all of the things that we're doing to try to feed our kids and meet their needs. And then it, we felt it was important to actually build out a section as well for the social emotional learning and the family resources um, because during this time, again, we lose sight a little bit and we focus around how do we deliver their learning, but also we need to be attentive to their social emotional needs. So that's what this document is. It is not, again, I stress it is not a one size fits all. It is not a way that we can pretend that we know what every district over the 540 school districts and over 700,000 children we were in no way going to be able to make a plan that fits all of that. So this document was designed with that autonomy in mind. It was designed for you to be able to make this plan fit your needs. Um, a couple of things I want to mention before I turn it over to Tiffany and Tiffany get ready to kind of talk about um, your section, but the FAQs are continually being updated. Those FAQs is kind of the, when we hear a question um, that we feel that, you know, multiple people are going to have, uh, our legal department, our different departments put out updates regularly through the FAQs. There's actually a whole section of those dedicated to distance learning. And so again, we want to make sure that you continually check back to those FAQs to really answer a lot of your questions that I know when I was in that seat of that superintendent, that district leader, I would definitely be having those same questions. So I, I encourage you to do that. And then the assurances. I've had a lot of calls and emails about where you can find the assurances. Those assurances, if you'll just go to the FAQ page um, on the website uh, where they're continuing being updated, you can find those assurances there and you can download those as well. So at this time, before we start taking any questions, I wanted to allow Tiffany Neal, our executive director of CNI, to kind of touch on some of the updates that she's been able to bring to life in the last couple of days. Tiffany, if you could. Thank you so much, Aaron, and hello, everyone. I'm actually gonna share my screen uh, quickly so you can see some of the resources, as well as uh, put some links in the chat box where you can navigate yourself. I believe um, Gary or Jeremy, uh, you may have to give me capability to share screen, and if that's not uh, a capability, that's okay. I'll just talk through some of the resources. If you're currently looking at the distance uh, learning guidance document. If you will scroll down to the area um, titled Essential Resources for Teachers, what you will find there are several resources for curriculum and instruction at this time. One thing that you'll notice in the distance learning framework are sample schedules. Tiffany, just a question. Are we supposed to be seeing a screen? 
Not yet, because I have, I don't think I've been given access just yet. Gary or, or Jeremy, are you able to? Ah, here we go. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, I apologize. I'll get this taken care of for us. All right, so what you should see on the distance learning guidance framework is an area down uh, below where you'll see essential resources for teachers. And I'll point out to you that there is a sample schedule for different grade bands and courses at high school or disciplines at high school. Keep in mind, this is just a sample. Each district um, is afforded the opportunity to develop their own scheduling and amount of time on learning for various areas. But there is a sample schedule there for you. Tiffany, can I just jump in real quick? We're seeing your great um, island picture, but we're still not seeing your actual screen. It's a great picture, however, of your vacation spot. Um, but if you can slide over the, uh, there, go. there you go. Thank you. Now we see it. All right. Let's give this one more, one, one more go here, guys. So down in the essential resources for teachers, you'll see a sub area known as sample schedules for instruction. And so here's where you'll see that sample schedule. Again, it is just a sample. Districts uh, should be thinking about what makes sense for their local context. If you scroll down just a little bit further, this is where you'll start to see guidance for grade bands and content areas. And I wanna point you to one um, link in particular here, and it's the instructional support page. I'll, I'll make this just a tad bit smaller for us so that we can all see this. All right, on this particular page, you'll see several resources, and I apologize, this doesn't appear to be the updated one, so let me uh, try this one more time. Here we go. On this particular page, you'll begin to see several resources. First of all, you'll see for every grade band, there's going to be a guidance document that really supports teachers as they think about providing distance learning at this time. Within the document, there are just prompts to help teachers consider what tasks they may want to do or how they may want to provide support both with technology and without technology. I'm gonna go back to our webpage here. Again, that's available for every grade band or discipline at uh, the high school area and middle school area. But you'll also see linked for every grade band and discipline at middle school and high school that there will be a link where teachers have been sharing instructional ideas, tasks that students can do at home uh, through distance learning. Most of the tasks so far are no or very low technology based tasks. What we're currently working on is a system whereby teachers can submit ideas for instruction and then we can develop a repository that would be searchable by districts and teachers. But for now, you can see some of the tasks that have been submitted already or that we've developed in the curriculum and instruction office to share with districts. Again, this is on the curriculum and instruction uh, web link that um, uh, I showcased just a moment ago. And if it's not already in the chat box, I'll share it in just a moment. I also wanted to share with you on, on Friday, we hosted several virtual meetings for grade bands and disciplines. And we had nearly every room maxed out, but we did record all of the virtual meetings where we went over all of these documents and the resources um, that are available to you now. Those recordings should be up early this week. In addition to those virtual meetings, we have a couple of upper, other opportunities for uh, districts and teachers to utilize for curriculum and instruction. One is our new partnership with OETA, which we will be launching tomorrow at two o'clock in a webinar that will be live streamed through Facebook. And here you will see how teachers in your district can utilize the OETA programming to support distance learning. Essentially, OETA is providing us three different channels to provide programming from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, every uh, day, Monday through Friday. And addi in addition to that programming, there's a website where teachers can link to lesson plans or instructional supports to help them leverage that programming that's occurring. Teachers will have the programming list available to them one week in advance of the actual programming. So starting this Monday, 
the programming will start on all three channels. If you want to learn more about that or send your teachers to learn more, please have them join us for the webinar on Monday at two o'clock. You can also have teachers connect to our virtual course that showcases for them how they can leverage those resources. And that's available through the OSDE connect ok.gov link here. The last thing I'll share with you is that we are hosting every week virtual meetings for teachers by grade band and discipline in middle school and high school. So your teachers can join those meetings where we'll be sharing additional resources, troubleshooting with them, and offer, also offering them opportunities to learn how to use some of the technologies that might be available to them at this time. All of those meetings will be recorded and placed on this page. Thank you, Tiffany. We appreciate that. Uh, again, I think we underscore just the amount of resources that are available there. I want to let everyone know that we do see your questions. We're not ignoring those. We want to be mindful of those questions and we will have an opportunity to ask some of those questions at the end of this. So please continue to chat them in. Uh, but at this time, I want to give the time to our schools uh, who have started this implementation process to allow to share some of these ideas. And so we're gonna start with Sherry Durkee from Sand Springs, the superintendent. And she kind of uh, has taken this and started to run with it. So at this time, uh, Mrs. Durkee, if you're available to kind of let us know where you're at, what your plan's looking like and uh, share with us some of your ideas. Thanks, Aaron. Um, hope you can hear me. Um, here, I was kind of reading the chat box um, too and, and learning some of the things that people are concerned about and no doubt we've run into some of those same things. Um, one of the things that we tried to make sure people know is just flexibility is driving all of it. Um, our goal, I think if you start with what is it that we want our goal to be and our vision with our parents is really um, that learning connectivity with our students. Um, I kind of went to our teachers with the psychological aspect of um, they're struggling and they're sensitive and they're experiencing a high level of anxiety too. And so part of what we're doing is trying to minimize that while we're keeping kids connected. One of the things that I've been very clean with our teachers about is within our own district and, and we're doing well, we've implemented Google Classroom for a long time in regard to trying to, to get a platform out to, to our students. But we are at all levels in terms of experience and expertise with that. And so um, we developed uh, quite a bit of professional development that our teachers can access so that we are trying to equip them with some tools so that they feel more comfortable. One of the things that has been helpful is we are utilizing our PLC groupings. And when I say that, I mean grade level or subject level teams so that they're doing some co-teaching online so that as they're developing um, lessons to try to um, deliver to children, um, it takes the burden off of one person and all of a sudden that collaboration is just helpful for everyone. The other part that I know people are struggling with is connectivity. I know we're shopping for hotspots right now. They're in low supply. And so that worries me just a little bit. And so we're alongside delivering the online instruction. We're also developing work packets and we're having kind of a grab and go, much like we do our school lunches for parents to come by and pick up um, their work packet. I, I really would say um, adherence to or kind of following the Oklahoma framework for the timeline. I think we have this picture in our head that we're going to be teaching a full day of school online, and that is not the case. And so if you look at the Oklahoma framework, you look at some of the other, I know Kansas has a model, um, COSA has put out a, a model for distance learning as well, and you look at the framework of the time expectation from pre-K through grade 12, what you find is it's very narrow. And so if we could pay attention to not putting so much pressure on ourselves that we expect our teacher to provide the six hour day of instruction, um, I think that might ease a little bit of the stress that our teachers are feeling. Another question I was gonna ask just really quick, and I can be very talky, so I, I wanna give everybody a chance to, to express their ideas as well. But graduation requirements, I think, if you've listened to anything Superintendent Hoffmeister has said over the last couple of weeks, um, we need to not make this punitive for our kids. 
Um, this is should be a, a safe way for them to relax a little bit and be connected. So if our students were on track to uh, acquire a, a grade or graduate as of March 12th, which is when we let out for spring break, then they're going to graduate and they're going to be successful. And so our idea is to take students that may need some extra boost to, to support them so that we can get everybody across the, the stage to graduate and in her credits if they're underclassmen. So uh, just a big part of it, I think, for our staff is to take some of the stress away. This is new for a lot of people, and it's certainly not how we expected to end our year. And so we need to be very cognizant of how people are feeling and, and how much stress they're under. Erin, if you have any other questions or would like me to address you know, some other part, I'm more than happy. Sherry, I'll sure. first mute your mic. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, but if you would please just stay on the line um, as we go through the schools, I want to allow other people to have questions and talk back and and uh, be able to really get in touch with, with you and with the other model or example schools. So um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Scott Farmer. We asked uh, Scott Farmer, who is with Fort Gibson Schools, to represent our mid-level schools of how their, some of their ideas, some of their planning and their thoughts have went through through this time. So Scott, if you could please share with us what you've been doing. Thanks, Dr. Espolt. Um, you know, one thing we've got to keep in mind, it's all like Sherry said, um, our community has been a little bit special because about this time last year, we were going through an extenuating circumstance where I had 200 of my kids' homes underwater. And so our school year last year ended abruptly. We never got to say goodbye. We had to terminate it at a, at a point we didn't want to. And so this is two years in a row for us that we haven't really been able to have closure. So one thing we've had to stress to our teachers is last year we had to step up and be the center of our community and provide resources and network with them and, and be that loving arm to wrap around them. This year is no different. We've got to step up and do that. Um, so once we knew and could see the writing on the wall that uh, school was likely not going to be in session, we got together and developed just some overarching themes and some overarching goals. And then we shared documents between our site principals and all the, all the players, child nutrition, special education, athletics. And we developed a, a parent and student document and then a teacher document. And they're just to be a simple guide. Um, to help everyone walk through and answer as many questions as we can on how we're going to move forward. And I just want to let everybody know uh, what's ours is yours. This is a time that we've all got to be together. Uh, our friends over at Muskogee um, have helped us through this too. I needed 17 hotspots just to take care of one of our buildings. They were a phone call away and gave us 17 hotspots. I got every kid covered now. So we've had to all reach out and help each other. But I'm going to type my email address in the chat thread. And if anyone wants our documents, I'll send you for our elementary, middle school, and high school, everything we have on paper right now, as well as our 60 distance learning activities that we're using in our elementary. Uh, so you don't have to recreate the will. I would ask though, as you take them and make them better, shoot them back to me so I can get better too. Um, what we've done as far as professional development, last week our tech director uh, involved every one of our sites and just created a quick link. Everybody jump on, let's say hi to each other just to make sure we know how to mute, make sure we can uh, navigate professional development. And we've set out a schedule for next week, Monday. We're kind of treating it like a first day of school. Uh, Monday is me and we are gonna do a professional development district wide, all 300 employees on the phone call at once. Uh, I've got a, a, a Google Slides presentation ready to go. Um, and we'll just talk through it piece by piece, kind of your raw, raw back to school moment. On Tuesday, it's all by site. Those are set up and facilitated by the principals. On Wednesday and Thursday, our uh, grades and our subject level people uh, will be doing their professional development and starting to reach out to our kids and make those individual phone calls. And then Friday is just contact with kids to start getting ready for Monday, let everyone know that the documents, our parent documents and our teacher documents are available. Um, and then we get started on Monday to six. So um, I feel like we're in a good spot to start moving forward. Yes, we have people that don't have internet. Yes, we have people and teachers that uh, struggle with uh, technology, but I am amazed at how well our people have come around and even jumped on our, our Google Meets. We're not using Zoom, we're using Google Meeting. We found it to be a little more 
efficient for our operation. It uh, doesn't make it better or worse than anything else, but it's worked for us. Um, you'll be surprised. I, I had a, a mock presentation with my family this morning just so I could practice my presentation. And I have a second grade visually impaired daughter who did better than the rest of us on navigating Google on a phone. Uh, so it can be done. And, uh, you know, this is a kind of a push out of the nest for us. But there are a lot of resources out there. What's ours is yours. We'll send it your way if you request it. Um, and I'd also point you over. COSA has some, some good documents coming out. State Department for sure has some great documents coming out. Um, hopefully, we can get us a landing spot where we can all share resources. So thank you, Dr. Espolt. Thank you, Scott. And then to represent our small schools, uh, we have Scott Parks on from Howe. And Scott, if you don't mind sharing with us some of your ideas and thoughts and some of your planning activities that you've taken on to this point. Uh, thank you, Aaron, and thank you, Superintendent Hoffmeister, for this opportunity. Um, we, um, uh, we're a small district, as you said. Uh, we're, we're about 650 students. Uh, currently grades uh, EC through 12. And basically what we've done thus far is, is we started um, the weekend prior to the Monday announcement that this was going to develop. We actually started doing some background, some research, and, and made the decision to push out surveys at that time. So we surveyed our families, we surveyed our staff, and we certainly discovered some of the things that have already been mentioned, discovered the, the uh, 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 some lacking uh, quality connectivity, uh, even on our teacher front. So we quickly discovered that as it relates to embracing uh, our online resources and our, our district-wide one-to-one laptop initiative, there was going to be some challenges there. Uh, we uh, moved from there to uh, move into an admin planning. So we started by getting comfortable with uh, our WebEx platform is, is the choice that we're uh, using to uh, work with primarily and we I wanted to get the administrators comfortable you get them some background as to what our objectives were going to be and um, really try to make this thing uh, uh, very doable because certainly everybody uh, I think an issue is like oh my goodness how are we going to do this and we really wanted to work hard to first and foremost get administrators on the same page and then on the back side of that we, um, we brought staff together. So I've already done through WebEx um, uh, staff-wide uh, meetings. Uh, I opted to put split certified and support because in the time that we did that um, on about Thursday last week, uh, they had different concerns. Uh, and part of this is, is fostering and building those relationships, not only ultimately back to our families and students, but across our staff. And so the certified staff, it was, it was that um, weekend spirit type um, uh, meeting where one, we're getting used to the platform and two, this is not bigger than we are. We have the ability to do this and we're gonna work through it. And this is, this is very doable. With the support staff, I met with them and, and of course the shift was their concerns over pay and what have you. So I was able to personalize that messaging, but then also reinforce the idea that, that they, they, they're going to have a place in this. There are going to be circumstances where we're going to need them supporting, uh, perhaps even virtually, uh, some of our uh, outcomes uh, uh, in this process. Uh, so we uh, uh, did that. We are now at the point uh, that during that week, we determined we wanted to launch this in a unique way. It wasn't unique in that it hasn't happened. Uh, but it was unique in that we used a, uh, a parade, uh, a caravan of cars. Uh, all staff came out, did their banners, and we paraded through town and across our bus routes of our district to basically bring about this, this um, new approach uh, uh, to educating and, and kind of launch our distance learning initiative. And it was, it was an awesome opportunity for our, our children to see their teachers. Uh, for us, surprisingly, to see the signs they had for us. I don't think some of us were thinking in terms of what they were creating to message back to us, but it was a really neat opportunity. We were very grateful for the schools we had seen that had done some variations of praise, and that's how we opted to launch what we're hoping uh, to plan out this week. So now we're in the planning stages uh, where we will, I will allow the principals, uh, they want to do a whole group, uh, kind of get folks comfortable uh, um, at each site. And then we go into planning with a planning team Monday afternoon 
and hopefully uh, develop our curriculum uh, throughout the week that, that will embrace elements of tech, elements of, of non-tech because some of it's not there. I think what's interesting is our approach is really going to uh, be focusing on enrichment activities, it's gonna be focusing on maintenance, but high engaging content and activities uh, versus trying to drill and practice or really get bogged down and trying to address maybe uh, uh, skills that maybe we didn't feel like we had an opportunity to address. I th we really focused on making sure parents are set up for success. Parents had talked to us in the surveys about communication. Uh, that was gonna be very important to them in this process. So we made the decision early to set up a communication portal. Everything we do will be the front page of our website. Uh, it'll be a one-stop shop to get updates, to know uh, what expectations are from uh, through various grade levels. And so we hope that will help them to, to you know, not feel uh, out there on an island, if you will, uh, in this process. And so uh, that's where we're at. I think, uh, uh, I think the key is, is that this is, this is a very doable process. And I think one thing that we did discover, uh, and I'll close on this, is an example of our first grade, uh, Miss uh, uh, Raina and Miss Sanford were already having kind of uh, bummer moments where they were expressing that they were not going to get to do their end of year uh, animal science project. And they so look forward to it. Children, as they join their grade, look forward to this as a culminating activity. And we quickly said, well, why not? Reinvent it. Uh, so they have. They've gone to work to reinvent it. They're going to do it virtually. They have three students that have no connectivity. They've already started thinking, incorporating ways that they can have them contribute. And basically, the students are going to capitalize on the resources out there to create a animal science book focusing on their animal. And parents will have an opportunity to uh, acquire that book when the activity is over. So, yes, there's room for those new emerging, emerging skills or activities. I think the key is, is don't rule anything out. And so we're not ruling uh, graduation out. We literally had the conversation around prom because a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of, uh, of juniors and seniors especially are really bummed about prom. Well, you know, we've already had an idea infused about a, a dance off, you know, pot you know, potentially capturing video of students and, and create a dance off. So I think it's all about investing in our community, the relationships and continuing to foster those relationships. And that's gonna be our primary focus while infusing best we can uh, some academic supports uh, to maintain and or enrich our students through the remainder of this school year. Thank With you, that, Scott. I'll turn it back to you, Aaron. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. And to all three schools, um, what we're gonna do real quick is we, first of all, I want to continue to ask you to um, send your questions via the chat box. We're also being able to answer some of those questions in the chat box directly back to you and to all panelists. Our SDE staff is, is watching that chat box and being able to do that. Um, but before we get into asking questions to the SDE staff, I wanted to ask um, some of the schools, some of the questions that I've been seeing. Um, Sherry, are you still on the line? I'd like to ask you, a question goes that came in, and I've heard this a lot. What are you doing for those kids who just don't want to do anything? Because like you said, you know, we don't want to do any harm to our students. So how are you communicating with your staff and with your community about the urgency of, and, and the vital importance of continuing learning if those kids are just not wanting to do anything? Sherry, can you answer that for us? I can. That's a great question, Erin, no doubt. And I, I have to remind people that if we were having school and kids were coming, you would still have kids that didn't want to do anything. And so I know this is a unique time, but that's not different than um, what you might have if you were in school. And so what I would say to that, to the best of your ability, try to engage. Um, I think when we talk about enrichment and making activities fun, I think it's easier. I'm not going to say you're going to get 100% engagement at all, but it's easier to get kids engaged in something they like. For an example, we have um, our dear Mr. Morrow at Charles Page High School. He has a sweet family of little girls in his home and a, a beautiful wife. And not every day, but a lot, Mr. Morrow has been posting a little science activity um, on his Facebook page. And so I, I just think that you have to start thinking through enrichment and engagement. 
and then hope you can connect with as many families as you can. And um, again, understanding that if you set the bar at 100%, you know, you, you might not get there, but to the best of your ability, you kind of try to, you have to try to engage students. Thank you, Sherry. And uh, I want to go, uh, oh. Superintendent, you have something to add? Yeah, I do. And I just want to um, add to those comments from Sherry. Um, let's also use this as an opportunity where we really have been freed of other distractions and are able to pull a number of people who might have been um, focused in a different area now to first make sure that those who are on track to graduate, we're doing everything we can right now to uh, make that as seamless as possible. Uh, and, and then for those who need to redo, rework, review, revise, whatever, revisit, um, let's do that work now. We have been gifted an opportunity of not having to focus on teaching for a test or making a um, window that uh, is uh, disruptive to the continuity of learning because of a testing window has been removed. So we really have a, a new opportunity. And I think as we look to doing things um, through this re-engagement lens, it's a real chance to strengthen some of those personal connections and, um, and then build on that for the coming year or to send students off actually finished, complete, and ready to graduate. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, I wanted to touch to another question, and Scott Farmer, if you could answer this one for us. Um, you have mentioned that, and I know speaking to you earlier about doing some, I think you're doing it within Google, but it doesn't matter if it's Google or Zoom or, or Teams or however your school's facilitating those meetings, but for the students who do have connectivity, are you having your teachers connect through them, through that um, resource, and what does that look like on a daily basis? Yeah, we're, we're kind of doing a four-day week with our activities, and then our teachers have a day to plan so they can get together uh, and get the activities prepared for next week. So basically, all teachers will start assigning stuff on Monday. Kids will have all week, and teachers have office hours virtually, of course. Uh, to facilitate questions and do instruction. And then Friday, all of our uh, English department, all of our math department, they get together and start planning for the next week and then post those in Google Classroom so the kids can kind of see their whole week's worth of assignments. Um, and then we're available through Google Meeting. They can send out links so a teacher can be at their uh, house on the couch um, and have a, an invite and a kid can just click on the link, open it up and they can have those interactions should they need that. Or a student can even send an invite and say, hey, I really have a problem with number 13. Can you, can you help facilitate this for me? Um, and in regard to packets, Dr. Espold, if you don't mind, because I see a number of questions, I'm just gonna tell you what we're doing uh, with our kids that don't have connectivity, especially at the lower levels. You know, we have our distance learning activities and instead of everyone returning all those packets because man, that's just hard to, to facilitate. What we actually have is we're distributing two weeks worth of, of work at one time, just to limit the number of interactions up at the school. And then the, the home, the parents are responsible. We have a cover sheet where the parents are responsible for checking off that those things were done. And then what is, what is just turned in is that cover sheet. And that's basically through a picture, through an email, through a scan document, through Class Dojo, um, through a Facebook page, just documentation that the parents signed off um, that it was completed. We all do that all the time. Everybody sends home reading logs and they sign off that their kid read 30 minutes. Could they lie to you? Absolutely. Uh, but we just want to make sure that our communication at least twice a week is, is done with the house and we can are done from school to home and we can check off that that work was completed. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. And then Mr. Parks, I had one question for you. Um, and it kind of touches on the packets as well. You know, we talked earlier about a lot of your areas, you can't even get cell phone service, not just hotspots, but cell phone service at all. Um, and kind of going back into what Scott touched on the packets, how are you really doing anything for those students that not only can't get connectivity through hotspots, but can't even get connectivity through cell phones? How are you addressing that? Well, I think in all honesty, that's something that's still going to be discovered this week as to our ways and means to intervene. We're not ruling out uh, some type of packet process. I think our, our focus may be a little different as to what we hope to achieve with that, because I'm not and the team has not really looked at that as being a back and forth process. 
uh, but that's because our focus is on a, a maintenance enrichment um, uh, support. Uh, certainly, elements of feedback is needed just so students know that they're, um, you know, effectively accomplishing what what you know they're being engaged in. But, you know. We, I think this is time to innovate. I mean, I like the fact, and I think Superintendent Hoffmeister is reinforcing this, there's essentially no wrong way of doing this. We, we've, we've got the freedom to do just about anything and be as creative as we can be. The only wrong process is to do nothing. And so I think that uh, we're gonna be looking at, um, I know that Superintendent Hoffmeister has worked uh, hard with OETA uh, we're going to look at um, uh, look at their resources and their programming to see if that's a fit for our students that are not uh, effectively connected. Uh, reading, uh, you know, there's a lot of literature out there available, and so we can look at um, book uh, resources and 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 look at uh, utilizing phones to record and capture those moments and and create feedback that way. I mean. We have, uh, we have cell phones that work, things that, that, that are a problem is sometimes they're sporadic as far as sustaining stuff like this, where it's ongoing over a period of time. But to be able to capture something, send it back and forth via text message, those are things we'll look at to, to, to make those connections and to be sure to include those students. I will say we're also actively looking, and I haven't seen it mentioned here, I know it's been mentioned over the past week, uh, we've already engaged some of our service providers for students with disabilities to be sure uh, to address uh, some uh, ongoing therapy. And so we'll, we'll look at tele uh, therapy opportunities and we're gonna engage even our own speech uh, therapist and our uh, paraprofessionals to be uh, an active part of this process because we can remotely bring them in where those students have connectivity. And then we will look at those situations where perhaps they don't. Uh, we've already surveyed for uh, those that need computers. We're not going to just hand every computer out because some already have computers in their home, but we have a survey of 92 uh, families that would like a computer placed that, that we're not already doing the take home privileges. So I think those are things we're just going to discover as we go and work through it and just be creative. And I think that's the empowering thing is we can be very creative about uh, this process. It's really, it's a terrible situation, but it's, it's an opportunity that we've been given to explore uh, new emerging ideas and ways to engage our students. Okay, there's some things we need to cover. Thank you so much for um, Scott uh, and um, both Scott's actually and Sherry. Um, we're getting a lot of questions. I want to make sure people understand. The waiver that is uh, required in exchange, it's assurances in order to have access to all the waivers that the State Board of Education um, approved in our meeting on uh, Wednesday. This includes a template. You have to fill that out. You have to complete it. It will be approved. You do not need a special board meeting. Uh, for your local board to approve it. But yes, we have to have that on file and uh, that is what will relieve you from um, existing regulation. And the second thing, by the way, we're turning that around very rapidly if you use the self-populating template that is available on our website. The second thing uh, to mention is that we have a, um, a late, Friday directive from the epidemiologists, state epidemiologists and the uh, governor's office that anyone coming to the school, whether that would be a essential worker or child nutrition worker, even if it's a, um, an, another individual who's coming to the school like a teacher uh, for a particular reason that you deem uh, you approve, it need, you need to take their temperature all schools are going to have to have a no admittance policy unless a temperature is taken and they do not have a temperature um, at the time. And then people are to wear gloves and we don't want to, they need to arrive um, unless they're working in child nutrition or in those basic areas of HR, billing, um, and some of those other identified essential services. But if they happen to be a teacher, they have to have an appointment with you. So this is a new directive, and I just want you to be aware of how very, very um, critical it is that we are not continuing to spread the virus uh, at the school, and this was given uh, late on Friday. 
Um, there's a couple other things that are coming through here about um, paper handling and the packets. And I do appreciate what's been said here about um, even um, not making the, the interaction so often. Uh, but we do know from our state epidemiologist, also from Dr. Fauci um, at, you know, speaking at the national level, that paper is generally not going to be how the, the virus is transmitted. However, um, to be safe, it is important to, to limit contact as much as possible, but it is not something that we should have um, tremendous concern about. Just use the uh, practical safety precautions um, as we've already described. And uh, with that, I'll jump back off and perhaps um, at this time in the remaining minutes, um, we can hear from um, our partners. Thank you, Superintendent. I appreciate you um, clarifying some of those things. I am seeing here and communicating. Um, COSA, we need you to uh, call in or chat box us for that we can get your contact information. Uh, do we have Sean Heim on at, right now from OSSBA? I think that they're trying to get them on as well. So I do see uh, Brent from Oklahoma Pul Public School Resource Center. Um, real quick in this, these final few minutes and seconds, uh, Brent, could you tell us maybe some services and supports that you're able to partner with us to provide? Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Superintendent, for this opportunity. Um, we are, um, can, can you hear me okay? Yes, we hear you fine. Okay, good. Um, so really excited to, um, to try and help schools. We know it's a difficult time and we know that, that everyone's just getting dumped with information. So what we've tried to do is step into a role of how can we help um, first. And I'll put all of this in the chat here so, so folks know how to reach out to us. If you look in the chat, I'll, I'll, I'm copying and pasting this, but we've set up a daily Zoom from 12 to 1 where folks can just get on. We're, we're particularly encouraging, send us your teachers that are intimidated by technology. Um, and this goes for, for, for member and non-member schools alike. Um, my kids are in Edmond schools, um, and my, my daughter's teacher sent out a note to, to all of the students and said, I'm really intimidated by technology. And I wrote back and said, well, jump on our call. We can help. Um, so we're trying to just be there as a resource. We know that teachers come with different levels of, of, of uh, comfort with technology, and we'd like to be there to help. Um, we're also available, I put in there just for, for help desk tickets. If, if, if schools are stuck or looking for ideas or just need help in a particular area, um, you know, we have uh, expertise with, with school legal issues, finance, technology, communications, and teaching and learning. So, um, you know, please, please do reach out. And I always like to say, just like we say to our students, if you have a question, we know other schools have a question. And that helps us then put out additional guidance and to work with the State Department. I've just been floored by the, the amount of work that I see coming out of the State Department. And, and we really want to help. I did hear earlier about hotspots and the need for that. I've had a number of vendors reaching out to me. So if you're looking for hotspots and or Chromebooks, um, a number of vendors have reached out with different quotes. Um, and my cell phone, I put in the comments, but it's 405 820 3619. Um, we also have online training available. Um, anyone can come to our website. All schools are now eligible. Usually, this is a member service, but we're just opening this up. If there's any training that schools need to get, including school board training, um, we have that available within our portal. Um, but, you know, please reach out, let us know how we can help. We know that this is a time where we've all got to pull together. Thanks, Brent. I appreciate that. At this time, I want to talk to Dr. Heim from OSSBA. I know that y'all have done a great amount of work as well. And Dr. Heim, could you help us and, and allude to some of the things that you're providing in supports? Dr. Heim, could you unmute yourself real quick, please, sir? Yeah, I was just um, shocked to see my face. I was ready for radio versus television here. Sorry about that. Um, I do want to share just quickly, uh, remind you the things that the OSSBA is offering. Uh, most of you know our templates online. Uh, we have board resolution templates. Uh, the latest ones are changing your school calendar and an insurance for employee pay. Uh, that insurance will help you a lot in the unemployment realm. So we've seen hundreds of unemployment claims come in in the last few days. And if you haven't already, I ask you to go ahead and put out information to your staff, making sure that they know uh, what your plan is for that pay. Other things hot off the presses last night, uh, we added a communication template 
uh, which would be your introduction to your continuous learning plan. So it's a template where you can fill in your information uh, that's on our website and we'll send you a link to that, uh, but it's on under the coronavirus area. Uh, other things, just uh, remember our job is to help you fulfill your mission. So anything we can do to help uh, our five attorneys, myself and our communication staff. Uh, we also have an online forum uh, just for super, superintendents. Uh, one of those uh, logins is just for you superintendent so you can share information. Um, and last thing is I would encourage everyone to get on the Oakla Ed chat tonight because it will be on distance learning. I think we'll see a lot of information from teachers and other educators that we can build off of moving forward. Thank you, Dr. Hyman. I want to finish with Pam, Dr. Deering from COSA. I think we have you on the line now. Um, Dr. Deering, could you please finish us up with uh, some of the supports that COSA is able to provide in accordance with SDE? Good afternoon. Can you hear me, Aaron? Yes, ma'am, we can. We have you. Oh, great. Thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for being included in the call and having to appreciate all of your leadership. Uh, very quickly, with COSA, we have a couple of resources that we do. We have a run call. We thought about this. It's a resource plan around the time that we've done survey this call. And what we call peers, uh, which is the PIR for those kids that are on full uh, uh, internet. Yeah. On number two, a, a tier two, uh, where those kids are uh, that don't have home at, home internet access but have smartphone connectivity, and then tier three for those kids that don't have any mode of access to internet at all, and what those teachers can do at that point. So if you take a look at our resources uh, on our website, they're posted there where you can find them. This particular document included as well is a, a rubric for a standard for teacher content delivery. It helps you assess as a district where you may be with your teachers in terms of, of delivery of that content. So that's all in one document. That is a great resource, I think, from COSA in line with and supportive of the State Department's uh, uh, guidance document. The other piece is the uh, COSA Resources District Learning Plan Implementation. We see a, a valuable role there in helping connections. Uh, we see that we have lots of school leaders, uh, teachers and principals who have already experienced distant learning and we can connect you uh, with leaders who are doing it now. Uh, we have a committee, a great blended learning committee uh, already in place uh, with tech directors and online providers to guide. We have great communications where we're facilitating uh, regional weekly meetings of our association to gather the feedback and assist uh, uh, COSA members with school leader and COSA, COSA director's expertise. Um, and in closing, we really feel that our role is helping school leaders implement uh, the State Department's distance, distance learning plan, but also providing those resources, information, and training. Uh, we really hope that the advancements that will be made in the next few weeks will help transition us to where we need to be when we do high quality blended programming in the next year. So be keeping notes about what we need to do uh, in the future when, when school starts again. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to participate and lend our efforts to, to the work that's occurring for schools. And we want to uh, be appreciative of the collaborative partnership with you and the other organizations represented today. So thank you again for all the work that you're doing. Thank you, Dr. Daring and Superintendent Hoffmeister. We just have a few uh, seconds, minutes left. I'd just kind of like for you to close us out with any final comments, thoughts, or anything that you would like to add at the end. All right, thank you. We will also um, take this time to give um, additional information. Um, I, so just to restate, because there's a lot of questions um, about the um, building, uh, taking temperatures, using gloves, using appointments, that type of model. So again, let, let me just, I think the word directive is too strong. It was guidance when asked, can teachers come back into the building to get their items or something that they need? And the statement back from the state epidemiologist and secretary of state, Michael Rogers, after checking on this was that we do not want to see 
uh, people in the building that haven't had the temperature taken to use gloves and it's ideal and most practical to make appointments um, to do that and not um, have just uh, various people in and out of a building where they are leaving um, their, the contagion on surfaces and people don't know it. Um, also, I think you are advised as well to just simply use common sense, but the goal here is whether we have um, 25 people at one time or which obviously we cannot do or 25 people walking down the same hall at different times, it leaves the same contagion. So the, the idea here is we don't want people in, that have um, temperatures in the building period. And you don't know that unless you're taking temperatures. Um, so I'm sorry that that's not very convenient, but this is how we prevent from the further spread. And um, again, use, use the common sense and be, really watching um, those kinds of guidance that come out of the CDC and um, the state epidemiologist as well. Um, it, let's see, I'm just wanting to check and see if there are other things we need. Uh, Phil, would you jump in as a final word too, as I know you have been monitoring some of the questions. Uh, uh, sure, I, there uh, just a couple of questions. I think you obviously had addressed the issue with the uh, paper packets. Um, uh, there was a question earlier about the uh, shelter in place in Oklahoma City and Tulsa, and if the governor does end up doing a shelter in place uh, order for the state. Uh, and I guess the question was, does that impact uh, the school functions with regard to distance learning or feeding kids? And we understand that the function for uh, distance learning and, and any work around child nutrition is something that would not be, uh, would be excluded actually, where that can continue. Is that, is that what you're saying, Phil? Yes, yeah. Um, and then uh, previously, I believe someone had asked, and this might be a question more for uh, Brad Clark if he's on, is some of the legal issues with regard to connectivity between uh, teachers and students? Yeah, uh, thanks, Phil. You guys able to hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, I, I believe the question was surrounding if a teacher is on uh, a Zoom video conference, for example, with a student and see something um, such as uh, abuse, the quick answer to that is very straightforward. You still have the obligation to report that matter uh, as has always been required. Um, in a different context, if a teacher or another individual sees something that makes them uncomfortable, uh, but may not uh, necessarily be seeing or hearing child abuse, for example, I would recommend reporting that as has always been uh, provided in local school district policy. Thank you for that. Also, I see there's uh, questions about children coming to the school to retrieve items uh, from their locker or remove items uh, for the end of the year. I would advise you do not do uh, some kind of uh, day where people all come and take things home. That's, that is exactly um, the opposite of what needs to be done to contain the, um, the virus. So it's premature for us right at this moment to be thinking about clearing the, the building and classrooms for the end of the year. I think we've got to get through this very serious time right now of as much isolation and um, sheltering away from others as possible. Uh, we don't get a second chance at the window to flatten the curve. This will make all the difference in the world in our ability to go back to school in, and, and return to normal in the months ahead in the summer or in the fall. So let's please try to ask people to be patient. If there is a critical item uh, such as medication that a family needs, 
please do that by appointment and even as the as much as possible uh, deliver that exchange outside at, at a drop-off point like the bus oval or something where meals are also being collected uh, or distributed so i hope that's helpful um but again uh please let's room just keep people safe and at home as much as possible All right, we know there are a lot of questions here. Um, I want to finally uh, conclude this with the, the uh, commitment that I am making. To me, this is an opportunity for us to identify where we lack the connectivity uh, at a state level. We have that now in aggregate form and we've disaggregate, uh, disaggregated the information by county and by school. So based on some of what we received back in the survey, there will be more information that we will gather, but we have enough to begin the work of uh, getting everybody connected. I want every student connected. Um, there's going to now be uh, relief funds coming federally that we're gonna be able to use on for these things and we have made a, our commitment to make this happen in the coming weeks. It's not gonna be immediate. So I appreciate your creativity and flexibility as we continue to engage in learning and um, maintaining and building skills. But, but please know that's where I think uh, the silver lining is in this um, need for remote and distance learning. We're going to identify where those inequities are and this has to be a large state level uh, shift and dedication of resources that I'm willing to um, put a lot of energy in making sure we get the connectivity and we're, we do have support in the governor's office with uh, his cabinet that uh, members um, Secretary Ostro, who is beginning that work in coordination with us as well. So thanks to all of you who joined us today. Thanks for each and every one of you who filled out the survey. It was very valuable information. And um, I'm going to kick it back to Aaron to close us out. Thank you for everyone's participation, your time this afternoon, your dedication to the students here in Oklahoma, to all of our support organizations, to the example schools that spoke today, everyone at SDE. We're all in this together. We all are trying to find solutions that best serve our students. And together, I know that we can do this with our state's can-do attitude. We can pretty much accomplish anything. So thank you for your time. My email and number are listed there in the in distance learning resources. Uh, feel free to call me. I'm answering on weekends, answering uh, emails. I'm here to serve you. So again, thank you, Superintendent. Thank you for everyone that's participated in today's call. Um, Superintendent, raise your hand for one more thing. So she is actually going to close this out. Um, yes. And so just as far as connectivity, um, that will be up and running. This is something that we'll be doing as we're able. I don't want anyone to leave the call expecting that in two weeks everybody's going to have connectivity, but we're going to put all the muscle and might and, and determination into this as we think about where we want to be at the start of fall. So uh, just want to tamp down some expectations if you think that that's something you're going to see flipped on like a light switch in um, a couple of days. Obviously, you know that that is likely um, impossible, but I say let's press on, let's charge forward, and let's not let off the gas uh, when it comes to the connectivity. And uh, one more thing, let me look. I need to clarify something. Um, uh, as far as paper, treat it like any other ina inanimate object. Wash your hands before and after. Uh, and uh, Everyone should be taking their own temperature to begin with a couple times in the morning and at night. Um, but yeah, stay safe and look for more information. We're just trying to share with you best practices and those uh, recommended guidance that is coming out. And we know that changes as this is a dynamic situation. Stay safe. We appreciate the work that you're doing. Lots of resources available. We appreciate our partners. Have a great rest of the Sunday and uh, we'll be in this together throughout the next week. Take care.